Hello and welcome to another very special, long episode of the Father and Son Pastime Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. How are you? That's my dad. Dad, like I just told the viewers, it's going to be a long episode because we are talking the 2023 season preview episode. We are going over over under stuff, wins and loss predictions. We are talking about playoffs. Don't talk about playoffs. <laughs> World Series, MVPs, Rookie of the Year, Cy Youngs. It's a prediction podcast presented by the Father and Son Pastime Podcast. A lot of P's in there. Perfectly said. Perfectly said. Well done. <laughs> Dad, I'm going to lead off that this episode is not for the faint of heart. Because <laughs> it not only will it be long, a lot of money is going to exchange hands. We're going to be placing live bets. DraftKings, shout out DraftKings for giving us these over-under lines. Um, but I owe you some money, Dad. Yes, you do. Quite a bit. <laughs> so for the, our uh, subscribers and our, our followers, you guys know that every year we do the 50 top 50 free agent predictions last year i won and i won 50 dollars. but this year dad you won so happily returning your 50 dollars. just want to make sure you know, it's real money he's paying me folks the expert is paying me i got more right and for all the lovely people that think they could do this at home you can because <laughs> he had seven out of 50 right and i had four out of 50 um almost the uh seven out of eight right of the first uh, eight uh, free agents yeah he got all the top ones yeah pretty much correct then just one after that and mine was like sporadic the very few four i got yeah um, we had i think one both of us we had it correct yeah so yeah that, that didn't do anything but yeah only one of our top 50 never signed gary sanchez is still a free agent yeah i know i looked you wonder I, what he's gonna do i was yeah. in the dominican league right now so maybe he catches okay. fire okay. um Chad Cool um, signed back in February. I was looking through our list recently. I didn't know that he signed, but he's a national. He has an invitation. Yeah, training. I think or, he's yeah. going to make the starting rotation like as their number four starter. I mean, there's no pitchers on that team, so yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're hurting. Yeah. We'll get to the nationals and their predictions and all that stuff. Uh, this is our second year of doing the Over Under podcast. At. Uh, what we do first is we're going to go team by team, talk you know, about them talk about their last year did they get better did they get worse look at the line that DraftKings gives us uh for that um i'm not going to be placing bets for everybody but there are a few that i feel like are very over exaggerated there's no way they're going to win that many and there's some that are like they're that's such a poor line they're going to win you know five six more or even 10 games more than that so i will be placing a majority of bets i got money in the DraftKings account ready to go Mm -hmm. ready to bet dad um, hopefully this will end up being... He's doing so well lately, folks. Right, exactly. This could be scary. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, hold on. I actually owe you $20 more. Um, the not baseball-related, but our NCAA tournament pool. Um, I didn't... Uh, that, if Shout-out to you at home. I'm going to stick to baseball uh, <laughs> because clearly I know nothing about basketball. Here you go, DraftKings. You're not seeing feel free to Feel free to you know set your own bets if you want there, buddy. Um <laughs> I'm hot. You are very hot. Uh, but hopefully some of these will end up netting me some victories because October is when I'm getting married, and that could be a nice little honeymoon, little excursion on the honeymoon if some or of these Or you'll hit. be getting a loan. <laughs> or I'll be really hoping that cash is a preferred gift at the, uh, yeah. the wedding. All right, so I'm going to pull up everything for DraftKings. Dad, we're going to talk about the AL first. Um, and then... We'll start, you know, we always, we got an East Coast bias. We're here in Maryland. We're going to start with the AL East. And let me get all the regular season wins. Probably had the most teams over 500 than any division last year. They did. Um, and Four teams over 500. Right now, the, let's just look at the whole division then. Three of the five teams are projected to have over a 500 um, winning season. Two aren't. Um, the Red Sox and the Orioles are not projected to have winning seasons. We'll hmm. get into that. Um, Dad, let's start. Talk, uh, let's start with the Yankees. The Yankees are currently the favored uh, team to win the AL East, not by many games. They were ninety nine and sixty three mm-hmm. last year with the Aaron Judge, you know, crazy record setting historic season. Their line is ninety three and a half wins. Do you see that being over or under? I see it being over. Well, it didn't take long, folks, for us to have our first <laughs> disagreements. <laughs> Um, how many, I'm just curious, how many wins do you think they end up with? 90. Well, then that's an under. They, they, the line is 93 and a half. Okay, I'm sorry. So, so if you said over, you're going to have more than 94 Right, they're going to be under. Okay, so we're in greens. I'm sorry. I have 92. I wrote that down, folks at home. I went 90 and 72. Um, well, all right, Dad, we're in agreement to this. Why 
did they? How did they get nine games worse? People that are Yankees fans are going to wonder why do we think they got nine games worse? I think they have some injuries right off the bat. Uh, spring training didn't look that great for them. Uh, I think so much energy got put into Judge and everything else. Their lineup still has a few f- flaws. Um, chemistry might be an issue. I just don't think that they are going to have the year they did last year. Um, I think Judge won't have the year he had last year. Uh, it's hard to do that regardless. But I just don't think that they're going to be offensively as good as last year. And Rodon, I think, hurt himself in spring training. He is. He is out through most of April. Montes is probably all year. And Harrison Bader is probably throughout out throughout the month of that, April. That's a whole bunch. Yep. Um, and Rodon was going to be either key. Yeah, and again, he's not out all year or anything like that. He's missing probably equivalent about four starts or so. Um, but that could be the difference of a 93.5 win to 90. Um, I'm right there with you, Dad. I think they're still a playoff team. Do you think they're still a playoff team? I do. Okay. I do. Um, I think team chemistry is great. I don't think Judge can replicate that great success. I mean, he carried that team at times. A lot of the wins were associated with just how good he was. Um, and I think they're kind of at a crossroads with do they go with vets? Do they go with these rookies? Is it going to be successful? Is it going to be this mismatch, hodgepodge, all thing all year? Yeah. Um, they got a crowded, crowded infield. How are you going to keep everybody happy? Right. Trades <laughs> are coming. Well, I do think they are a playoff team. So, again, Yankee fans, I, you know, we're not saying your team is bad. You're going to have an owner and a GM that are, are going to be willing to make the trades to keep you competitive all year. Um, I just don't. The biggest obstacle is overcoming the Astros. And I still don't think you did anything to overcome Houston in the AL. You are correct. So uh, we shall see, but still going to be a great year in New York for both the Yankees and the Mets. Uh, Dad, the Blue Jays, uh, not too far behind in DraftKings. They have a 91 and a half line. Do they win more than that or less than that? More than that. I have that as well. So you have the Blue Jays, in theory, winning the East. Yes, I think they will. So do I. Uh, um, I think that they got, they're a year older. Uh, I think some of these guys that had, you know, the, the, a good year might have a great year. I think they strengthen their team. The bullpen is much better. Uh, so I think that adds to more wins. Just the back end of the bullpen uh, looks good, and I think they're very athletic. Mm-hmm. So I think that the youngsters are getting, you know, older, and they improve their team. I think it's tough to say that they outright improved their team, but I believe they did. Um, they did a lot of uh, restructuring. You know, they traded a, a strong rookie, um, you know, for Dalton Varsho. I think that's good. They got rid of Teoscar Hernandez. They bolstered their bullpen. It's hard yeah. to say they 100% got better. They traded, you know, these single-A prospects for proven MLB talent. You know, they we'll, – we'll see. But I do think they are a better team as Bichette and Vladdy, you know, grow and age. Um, same thing with their pitching staff. Uh, I have a 90 – I'm not going to do this for every team, but I wanted to do this for the Yankees and Blue Jays. I have a 94-win Blue Jays team. Um, I don't think anyone in the East gets, you know, out of 90, past 95 wins. Um, I think it's going to be a very competitive division. I don't think anyone is going to be below 75 wins as well, so they're going to have that, like, 20-win, um, like, I don't know, gap. They are a good team. They don't have as many issues as pretty much every other AL East team has a pretty big issue they're dealing with or mm-hmm. some sort of loss. Um the Blue Jays seem stable. Um, I obviously have them as a playoff team, as do you, if they're beating the Yankees. Correct. Um, awesome. Yeah. I haven't bet any of these yet, folks. Um, again, the lines are, the payouts aren't all that great yet either. Um, but don't worry, they're coming. Um, it's just they're poof, they're right around. They're going to be a game or two off. So DraftKings has been pretty correct and so far, in my opinion. Yeah, it's amazing how these guys figure stuff up. And, you know, like even in basketball, how do they figure out those points? And most of the time, they're right in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's super science. impressive. Yeah. Beyond beyond impressive. Okay. Let's get into the Rays, Dad. Um, openly for any Rays fans, because, you know, five of you um, out there, <laughs> some could listen. Um, you were 86 and 76 last year. Your line is better than that. Very interesting. You're, you're at 88 and a half wins. Dad, openly, I took the under before even seeing the line Uh um, because I don't like the race or anything they stand for, how they run their business. Um, But give the fans at home the objective opinion on the race. I think they're going to run out of magic. I think they have done smoke and mirrors for the longest time. Pitch, pitch, well, pitching and defense has always been their keys. I think they lost some clubhouse leaders, 
and I don't think they're going to be that good this year. I'm thinking they're more of a 500 team. So you're under that line then? Correct. We are three for three. Should we bet on this too? <laughs> we bet on this last year. We bet at a, um, a $30 bet on this. Did you want to? Sure. Okay, we'll, we'll put a... Yeah. Th- We've had the same thing so far, so it's not like you know anything has changed. So we'll refocus on what's different mm-hmm. towards the end, folks. Um, yes, I think this team has gotten worse um, in just in every way, to be honest. I mean, Shane Baz is out all year. Glassdown's out through May, depending on his rehab, maybe yeah. even longer. Um, they got a guy in the bull- bullpen, Andrew Kittred, that's out through August. Lost Kiermaier. They, they lost a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know their their catcher is Christian Bethencourt. I mean, they really don't have any like they don't have any stars. They really lack stars. Um, the obviously the argument to this is everybody had a down year last year and everything's going to click this year. Mm-hmm. It's hard for everything to click. Obviously, it's hard for everything to go wrong too. Yeah. Um, I don't know where they're going to land, but I did take the bet. That's what I was looking over here for. Rather than an over under line, just as easy as that. They have a, will the Rays make the playoffs or not? And I said no. I said no as well. Um, very interesting. Okay. Yep. Um, I think we'll come back to this when we talk about the playoffs some more. But I think the AL is much harder to predict than the NL when it comes to playoffs. Um, there could be, honestly, th- four or five teams that you could juggle for those last couple wild card spots, um, in my opinion, the AL. And I'm sure some people have the Rays and... I wouldn't be surprised if there's some people out there that have the Rays winning the East Mm-mm. because, you know, crazy things can happen. Yeah. Dad, let's talk about the Red Sox. I'm happy to take the lead. They were 78-84 and 84 last year. DraftKings has them the same this year. They have a 78-and-a-half line. Um, I openly have them under. What about you? Under as well. I think they're a mess. <laughs> I, you know, the Trevor Story injury is, yeah. is really important because— They didn't do anything to fill it. They did not. You know, that's what I don't get. They had a whole spring training. They saw this need, you know, a couple years ago when they signed Story. They said, "Hey, be a second baseman for a year. We're not going to be able to resign Xander." They got that part correct, but what they didn't foresee is Story getting injured and being out and needing surgery and being out the whole year. Yeah. Um. They didn't do anything, like to get it. I think Masataka Yoshida could be a very fun player. I don't think he's going to fulfill the hits and the offense that Xander did. And obviously, Kike, learning shortstop, I would have kept him at second and gone, like, get a Glacius or some shortstop somewhere. There were a lot on the market. There were. Gleyber like, Torres was out there. A lot of replaceable yeah. shortstop second baseman could yeah. be there. Kike learning a new position. I know he's confident in it. Good for him. Um, Who's their second baseman? Christian Roy and Yu Chang. Kind of a platoon situation. Okay. Um, I didn't understand the Turner signing. You get an older DH when you had J.D. Martinez. I didn't understand that one. Um, a lot of their pitchers are already kind of injured. Sales a question mark. He didn't um, have a great spring, by the way. No. Um, you, you know, it's it's very confusing. The East openly is very hard to predict. I don't know how much, like I said, everything's going to be over 75 wins. They might be at 75 or 76 wins. The the, un- the, the over underline is pretty right where they'll be around that, but I just have a few games south. Me too. Dad, we're 4 for 4. Yeah. The Orioles. Now, you don't know any of these. I'm giving my dad these lines, uh, these over under lines live. We're betting live. It's very exciting. Like I said, not for the faint of heart. Um, Dad, what do you think the 83 and 79 Orioles of last year got ranked by DraftKings? I think we got probably a step down, like 81 ish. No, they went way down, 76 and a half. Mm. So this is really tough. Um, and this is one of the few lines where, because they're so hard to predict, I think both over and under are like positive money. Um, 76 and a half, they're saying that the Orioles got seven games worse, eight games worse, whatever the math is, so I'll say seven. Do you? What do you think about that argument? They'll do better than that. They'll be over. Okay. Yeah. First one we disagree with. And I want to hear your logic, and I want to hear mine as well. Go, let me hear you. I think they got a year of Grayson Rodriguez. He's not going to start camp. We know that, okay. right? But they're going to, you know, and I think they have a much better bench. Okay. Um, they've got the like three or four more young players come up. That's going to help them offensively. Gunner for the whole year is going to be huge. 
I just think they're going to be better to pitching staff. They should have done more in the offseason to get the pitching staff better, especially, you know, a couple more starters, bullpen help and all that. But I think offensively, though, they're going to do very well. They're going to score a lot of runs. I think they'll, they'll, they'll equal last year's record. It's really tough. The or like I said, the AL East is probably our toughest division when it comes to prediction. Even the order, I think for DraftKings, if you can correctly predict the forecast of the final finish, it's like ten dollars gets you a hundred because they're that confident you can't get the right five. The Orioles were projected at like sixty three wins last year, and they did like twenty games better than their projection. Incredible year in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Now, pretty much all of those arms are returning. All of the players are returning. Uh, you know, obviously they got rid of Mancini. You know, they basically swapped out pitchers with Gibson. Um, but they didn't improve their team. I think that's kind of fair to say. Hmm. Um, they do have a lot of unproven talent coming up. I think it's going to be fun to see what can click. I am taking the under because of the organization. The organiz- If you were committed, like the Phillies, the Mets, the Padres, again, Padres are a small market team. And said, hey, we see a window, which you could argue because there's no clear dominant number one team in the East anymore. I mean, any yeah, anybody could take over. Yeah. Um, why didn't ownership go out and get a couple big names? That's a great question because they promised the fans they would. Right. So I, this is my prediction for the Rose. They will stay competitive, but they will sell at the deadline. A lot of these arms, like John Means will return around that time, but Kyle Gibson, Cole Irvin... Um, James McCann, Adam Frazier. I believe they're all one-year contracts. Maybe there's some options in there, but for the most part, they're one-year yeah, contracts. Yeah, I think you're correct. They could shed payroll again and re-promise fans, and I think it could be terrible for Baltimore. But these this team was competitive last year and traded Mancini. But they have the revenue to be competitive. I'm well aware, <laughs> but I think Anthony Santander could be traded too, especially with this outfield yeah. logjam. Yeah, he's good. And if they get the right offer, they could sell and that's gonna be really hard with predicting these teams because yeah. if you told me that hey barring injuries this is going to be the team for 162 i take the over i know being sort of the gambler better betting man you have to say i don't trust the orioles organization to better their team by july 31st and that's why i'm taking the the mm. uh the under that's good thinking because you know it takes a whole different philosophy to be buyers mm-hmm. instead of sellers and they've only sold for yeah. the last six yeah. years yeah. Something like that. Uh, they never bought. I don't, I mean, yeah. yeah. That'll be a, a really fun thing to watch. I'm actually surprised we have four out of five in the AL East in common. Um, I just did take the Orioles under, so I put my money where my mouth is. Um, and uh, I put some money on them to not succeed. Plus sophomore slumps, but my argument's more on the organization. Yeah, but you know, a gunner for a whole year. I think gunner's going to have a great year. I hope so. Um, I do. He, he adds a lot to that lineup. Um, you saw a glimpse of that last year. I just think they have, you know, some folks coming up. Their farm system is the number one farm system in baseball. Mm-hmm. They got four or five guys knocking on the door. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But, yeah, they could trade from strength if they do sell to the deadline. Mm-hmm. Dad, let's go to the AL Central. Sure. Um, let's talk about Cleveland first. Breakout year for them as well. Finished first in the division. They went 92-70. and 70. I did not. I don't remember the Guardians until I looked, obviously, at you know the standings of last year. I thought they were like mid eighties. No, they're a ninety-two win team. Yeah, they did not get the respect they deserve. Um, their line is eighty-six and a half, and they did not make their team worse. They're saying like I guess everyone kind of melts in the Central and kind of you know just becomes average. They're saying that they got a they got six games worse when they added people like Mike Zunino and Josh Bell. What's your argument? Do you think over under? Under, and I'll tell you why. Oh, tell me. Tell me. Because last year they played all those teams in the American League Central. Remember the, yeah. La, yeah. last year's schedule? And Cleveland just you know, had yeah. a great streak with the Minnesotas, Detroits, and Kansas City because we played them so many times. This year they won't have that. So that's a huge, huge difference in scheduling. Cleveland's got to play everybody and not feast on the weaker competition. It's great arguments. You know what's going to be funny is we're just going to talk more about that like each way. We're going to use that for yeah. people, and we're going to use yeah. it against people. Yeah. Um, I, I have to go the over because I think my argument and my mindset is, did the team get better or get worse? And I think they got better. 
Like, if you say they stay the same, I might even hear your argument. But they mm-hmm. added power. They didn't have big power hitters right. last year. One big addition. They added Josh Bell. Yeah. Um, if he comes through. You're right. <laughs> um, same with Zunino. Obviously, like, yeah. you know, they, they have some... St- Their weakness was power. So they added that. Right. And I think this organization would pick up somebody at the deadline. Would pick up an extra bat, you yeah. know, a bench piece. You know, if... I don't know. Jose Ramirez is great at third base, but let's say... Um, Eddie Escobar gets completely benched by the Mets, and for some reason they need to drop yeah. salary. I don't think they yeah. will, but it's a bad example. But there's going to be these pieces, um, you know, that they can slot into their organization. I don't know. I just think that's an easy line. I'm going to go ahead and take the Guardians over 86 and a half right now. Okay. Um, Dad, let's, the Twins. If you're a bit big <laughs> fan of this podcast, I have a love hate relationship with this team. <laughs> Every year that you predict I them. predict them to like it's Braves Twins in the in the World Series. They don't even make the World Series. They don't make the playoffs. Um, they were seventy eight and eighty four last year, Dad. Really interesting argument here. Did they make their team better or worse? I'd love to hear that. Their line is five games better. Their line is eighty three and a half. They have DraftKings has Cleveland favored to win the division, but Twins eighty three and a half. That's a more, better than a five hundred team. Where do you think they land? I think that's a great prediction because I had him about that. So I'm going to take the under. Okay. Um, I think they're better, but not that much better. They could have done more mm-hmm. to help out their team. In that division, I think you got a lot of, you know, you're going to have three teams over 500. Uh, and Minnesota, I think, will probably be one of those teams over 500 by a scotch. Mm-hmm. This is, I have over. But I have 84 wins. Yeah. Um, I'm not taking any bets here. I wouldn't even take a dollar. Um, it's very hard to predict. Very streaky team. I think they did make their team better. Uh, I think Michael A. Taylor um, helping out Buxton, so Buxton can DH. Um, Joey Gallo, without a shift, could be better. He's still a gold glove defender. Um, and then Pablo Lopez. I mean, they really said, hey, here's our batting champ. Yeah. Let me get a Cy Young candidate. I like the risk this team has taken. Plus, I love Christian Vasquez. Hard for me to bet against him. Um, that was a big improvement, by the way. It was. And Gary Sanchez still, you know, like we just talked about, still under in free agency. I don't think this team. I know. We're, I don't think this team makes the playoffs. Do you think they? Make I the do playoffs? not think okay. they make the playoffs. It's, it's going to be it's fun, tough. It's going to be funny with Correa coming back. Will he will, be, will he add to the chemistry or subtract from yeah. chemistry? You know, because he left. Yeah, and you know? it's going to be a whole bunch of things because. Everyone's going to be watching his injuries this year. Was yeah. the scouting report and the medical report correct, or did the um, Giants and the Mets just completely miss an opportunity? And this year, Correa, I think, has that, I'm going to go show you what you missed out on, and I think that really helps the Twins get into the uh, 500 range. Okay. Definitely, you know, I th- ooh, fun, not a, if it's not DraftKings, I haven't seen it. Who wins more games, Twins or the Rays? Twins. I think so, too. I think so, too. But it's not by much. Correct. Yeah. Two or three games. Yeah. All right. Dad, let's go to the White Sox. We're going to, hey, we can tell the people. We're going to be seeing you, White Sox, this summer. That's right. In June. Get ready, uh, South Side. So, yes, if you, yes, we're going to the North Side for Father's Day and South Side for the day after. Yeah. Um, so, if you're in one of our Chi-Town viewers and want to meet us, let us know. Um, Dad, talk about a mid-team. They finished 81 and 81. I saw a, a graphic that they had, like, a 500-month everything all their series they split with this team they split with this team yeah. they just were mediocre DraftKings kind of has them at mediocre they have 82 and a half wins they think maybe getting rid of tony larusa made their team better is that over or under for you dad i think they'll do better than that okay so for the fans at home we are now we, we had four in common and now we have four different in a row tell me why they're going to do better than 82 and i half. think last year they were just besieged with injuries I think those folks are coming back. Makes the team better just off the bat, especially defensively. You know, you got Tim Anderson, uh, Roberts, those guys who really missed it. I think the pitching staff is much better than they they were last year. And by getting rid of La Russa, which I think was a detriment to the team, um, will help. I think the new manager will get a breath of fresh air. They'll let the guys play. I think they'll be... Better than last year, not by much, but you know they got, um, you know, I mean, if you think about Eloy Jimenez and all that, he's always injury prone. If he could stay healthy for a year, he's a he's a thirty home run guy. So if if they get healthy, they're going to be fine. 
If the injuries ravage them again, maybe not so much. But I think injuries are going to be the key. Agree. Um, I have them under a couple games, um, like an 80 and 82 win team. Uh, maybe even less, um, but I, I have so them. They're as, not making any improvements at all then. They were 81 last year. I, they might even go less than that because I wow. can see trades happening. Um, new yeah. manager is tough. I mean, you kind of see this in years past that like an Alex Cora, new manager takes him you know, all the way. Um, or there's not a good connection. I have yet to hear of positive things in the White House clubhouse. So, Liam Hendricks, crazy great personality, has cancer, probably out for the season. I think that's fair. Yeah. They lose an MVP. They lose Jose Abreu. I like, know. I cannot emphasize that enough. And who knows still what's going on with the uh, Mike Clevenger situation? I know he's found innocent under the domestic abuse policy, but just like um, Bauer. Do his teammates talk to him still? Is there a vibe? Is that a mid-year cut type of thing? Um, you know, Dylan Cease, I think, is a fantastic strikeout pitcher, but seems to only go five innings. Um, there's a lot being asked of the bullpen that's already down. Yeah, Hendricks. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and the MVP. I love Andrew Benatendi. I'm always rooting for him. I think five-year contract, good for him. Wanted him back in Boston. Don't think I would have gave him five years. Um, that was the only addition they got, they really do, did. They, yeah, they brought back yeah. Elvis Andros, um, and I think some pieces here and there. But yeah, yeah that's that's pretty much it. Um, they had high hopes for a new first baseman, though. Well, he's been on their team for a couple right. of years, so they just want to take him out of the outfield. I, I don't think that's a whatever. Um, I have them less now that I'm talking through it. I have them a lot less than eighty-two and a half. I can see Tim Anderson's in his contract year, right? That could be an interesting pickup for someone mid-year. Yeah. Um, I think Giolito and Lance Lynn, one of those is in their contract year. I can see the White Sox shedding payroll if they're not sec- first or second place by the deadline. I'm betting it under right now. <laughs> As we speak. It's fun. As we speak. Dad, let's talk about the two teams. Now, I guarantee you these teams will be fourth and fifth. I just don't know what order. Let's talk about Tigers and Royals. I think Royals will finish ahead of the Tigers. So, interesting. Um you want to talk about Royals first, then? Yeah, they can, okay. they have some talent. Uh, they have some young players that I think are going to move up. Um, they don't have enough to get themselves that much better. They got Bobby Witt. They got a couple of guys in the outfield. Um, they got a decent farm system. They have pitching. Yeah, like they do. They have pitching. two or three decent pitchers. Yeah. I just think they're going to improve on last year, and I think Detroit will get worse. I think Detroit's in a heck of a bind. So Okay, so both... The exact it's the exact same line for both teams, sixty nine and a half wins. They were pretty much the same team last year, but had worse records in six nine and a half. So they're gonna get better according to DraftKings, both teams, which I disagree with. Mm-hmm. Um let's since we're talking with Royals dad mostly, will they finish above seventy wins? I say yes. Wow. All right. I have uh that's five in a row, folks. I have them under um Tigers. What about the Tigers? Will they be less? Less. Okay, I figured. Way less. Yeah, I figured too. I think, you know, they're going to make it a nice little final year for Miggy. Sure. Um, and go to, you know, town for town and get all that stuff. I don't think he's going to have a very good year. They made some free agent, um, you know, signings that are just haunting them. And they got rid of, I mean, they got rid, but a lot of people chose to get free agency and got out of Detroit. Uh, their bullpen really suffered. Mm-hmm. Chafin went. Yeah. Chafin was by far their um, lead guy. So they tri- Yeah. So I think they have subtracted the talent from the team, that team that was already bad. Obviously one of the worst starts in what I recall, like major league history. Yeah. Um, but just such, just no offense coming out of Detroit. Um, you're usually hearing a lot more pops out of Detroit, not from this lineup, apparently. Um, Casey Mize is out all year. Um, Scooble's out half the year. Um, Torrelson didn't have a good year. These were names that were supposed to be the future high, of Detroit. High draft choices, by the way. Um, Riley Green's in there, too. Um, I, I don't know, man. I just I don't see this team coming together. I can see Boyd, Lorenzen, Scope, um, Austin Meadows all getting dealt the deadline for anybody. Um it, it if they can find a partner for hobby yeah. um but i just it's just done i mean this is they completely botched their rebuild um and they they could be one of the worst teams in baseball new gm i mean they clean house in the front office so it's going to take them a while to rebuild that team 
And, you know, similar to when the Cubs kind of disbanded, it's going to take three or four years to get them back to a 500 team. So yeah. it's going to be a while. Yeah. So they're, the, the attendance would be pretty low in Detroit. Well, now that all that talk, there's no way they're finishing above 70 wins. So I'm going to place a bet. Let me find the Tigers. And that concludes AL Central. Any more thoughts that way I look for this? No, no. I think the, uh, you know, they're, that's the L- AL Central and NL Central are two of the weakest divisions in baseball. Yep. Uh, one team comes out of each of those for the playoffs. Yep. And the rest struggle. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what I think. Ten teams so far, five in agreeance, five disagreeance. Interesting. Dad, I really want to talk about this first team in the AL Central. Or, sorry, AL West. Um the Houston Astros, World Series champs, six-time ALCS, been six ALCSs in a row for this team. They won 106 games last year. Yes. Lost only 56. Their line is? 106. That's what it should be. 95 and a half. <laughs> what? Tell me how this team got 11 games worse. Um, they don't, can you, Verlander? Is not worth eleven games, but and then they got some young kids coming up right. that are unbelievable. They are attributing wow. lo- loss of Verlander and an injured Altuve for two months for eleven wins. Again, what I just talked about the White Sox, they are now getting a, a MVP first baseman in Jose Abreu. That may carry that team. That may carry that and team. And they have a one player that plays left field DH. This best right. player in baseball. Right. <laughs> I don't know best player in baseball, but he's up there. He's a, yeah. Hunter Brown possible sprinkle sprinkle from rookie of the year stuff on um we talked about christian javier last uh uh, broadcast you know how i feel about framber valdez yeah the bullpen is stacked you did a whole thing i think on a bray you maybe um i do not see how this is not an easy it's probably the easiest over i see in this entire thing yeah i think they are a 100 win team they're the best i still think they're the best team in baseball and Dusty's a great manager. He knows what buttons to push when and when to ease up a little bit. They have such a great, great international draft that they have a pipeline of just great players that will that team will be in contention for a long, long time because of what they do with the draft. So good for Houston. They know how to supply everything. You're hearing these numbers for the first time, Dad. Is this the easiest over so oh, far? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, betting the over. Here we go. We're having fun, man. We're having a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Dad, the Mariners. Mariners, I think, is a good line. I will say this to Mariners fans. Um, they were 90 and 72 last year. The line is 87 and a half. They said, hey, they maybe got a couple games worse, something like that. Maybe there's a couple good locks there. They had that really long winning streak that, you know, you break up that winning streak with two losses. There's your 87 and a half wins. I don't think that's a, you know, an insult or anything like that to Seattle. Um, Talk to me about your thoughts. 87 and a half. Over. Over. I'm there too. Yeah, I, I think they're a fun team. Yeah. And I think if you really look at, you know, what they've done, they added some power. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're a fun team. You got the, you know, the rookie of the year going in his second year. Uh, we'll see where that goes. But he's a talent. Yes. He's, he's, he's worth the price of mission. The only reason I'm not betting this is because I think pretty much every team but Oakland is better in that division. Um, the Mariners don't get to beat up on the Rangers and the Angels so often. So Correct. that's a, it's a tough line. And, yeah, and, and yeah. don't forget Oakland. Yeah, exactly. We'll, <laughs> moving on from Oakland. Yeah. Actually, I'm very excited to talk about Oakland, um, which is weird to say. But they did get Teoscar Hernandez. Um, they have yeah. a full year of Luis Castillo. Um, a whole season of Cal Rally. You know, big dumper. Love to say his nickname. Um, <laughs> Mariners, playoffs or not, Dad? Yes. Yes, Mariners. Yes, sprinkling, sprinkling. I agree. Fun, fun, fun. That I'll let you obviously the I think that's an easy one too. Rangers A's or sorry sorry Rangers Angels sorry I looked at the wrong thing on my sheet people. Do, LA don't be mad at me. Who do you want to talk about first? Texas let's, or Los let's Angeles? Let's talk Angels because I I have them being in the wild card. Whoa! All right, I like the thought. They were seventy three and eighty nine last year. Yeah, 82. can't get any worse. <laughs> so them them and the Rangers are the exact same um, yeah. line at eighty two and a half. So they both think they're going to be kind of mid. So you think over over for the, for the Angels? Okay. I do. I think they're they're. Let's face it. The lineup, if everybody is healthy, right. is a really good lineup. And that's what what you just said is very important. Keep going. And then they they've added. They I think they're finally taking things seriously. I think you know Trout's saying, "Hey, enough of this. Let's go." They got the, probably the best player in baseball, in Otani. He's coming off you know the great World Baseball Classic. 
I just think that the Angels are going to put it together this year and get tired of losing and play better. I hope. I really do. I do too. Um, It'd be good for baseball. It was tough. I I was thinking about like who is this you know final wild card slot going to be uh, between the Rangers and Angels. That's honestly who I was was down. I wasn't between the Twins. Um, I hope the Angels get to see the playoffs for Otani and for Trout. Now the reason I didn't take them, Dad, I think they trade Shohei Otani. Woo-hoo-hoo! I think it becomes. Can a, you imagine what they get in return? I think it becomes a bigger trade than Juan Soto. If they're losing. Correct. And I know that's wow. a huge if, but just like the Nationals a couple years ago, you have, you know, a bad series before July 31st and you fall a couple games below 500 yeah. and you get this monstrous offer for Turner and Skircher. You take it. Um, maybe they think, if they do that trade, maybe they think they can re sign them in the offseason. I don't, you know. The fact that an extension has not been worked out, if it, there was, if Shohei got 10 years, 500 million, I would take the over. But. There's a reason I'm not taking them, Mm -hmm. and I'm also not going to take... I've took Shohei Otani for the past like two years for MVP. I'm not going to take Shohei Otani for the MVP of the AL because he doesn't finish in the AL at the end of the season. I bet you I can predict where he's going if he gets trade deadline. Uh, There could be so many people, to be honest. I think it's a bidding war. I think he gets in a moving van and goes across town. I think he could, too. I think he could, too. Because they have the money. It's... The trade... And they have the prospects, but Correct. the trade and then the money with the who can not just trade for him, but then who can sign him because the right. Orioles could trade for him technically. The Orioles yeah. could give up run a player, right? The Orioles could give up Norfolk Tides, but could they resign him for ten years? That's what's going to be uh, the. Yeah, it's all great thinking, by the way. So that's what was tough for me, Angels fans. I know that's that's your biggest watch right now. Um, I still think Trout has a great year, Dad. Obviously, I'll I'll just keep talking because I think the Rangers are that sixteen. I think the Rangers make the playoffs. Okay. So I'm taking the over. 82.5 is the line there, too. I will say that they would have to have the biggest jump since the Orioles last year in terms of records yeah. from year to year. They went 68-94, Dad. But I think yeah. they're the most improved team in baseball. By DraftKings logic, they're jumping 15 games. To be in the playoffs for me, they got to jump 20. they got to get around the, the, the mm-hmm. mid to high 80s. Um. I am gonna. I'm gonna take this bet. I think they'll finish like again, like mid 80s, mid to high 80s. They went from a pitching staff that had like one person on it, Martin Perez, name me a second person, um, and then let's go get Jacob Degrom, let's go get Nadia Valdi, let's go get Andrew Heaney, let's get Jake Odorizzi. They had an active offseason. Right. They got to stay healthy. They got to stay healthy. <laughs> pitching staff, especially, J- yeah. it it wages a lot on Jacob Degrom. They still have Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, just boppers. And again, my. Mm-hmm. I've thought this. I've seen this for a couple years. They're hosting the All-Star Game in 2024. They want to sell everybody. Hey, remember that postseason 2023 Fall Classic, 2023 playoffs, whatever they can sell. I think that really helps them sell out tickets for 2024, get the All-Star Game in there. I think they will be buyers at the deadline almost, unless they're like 40 and 60 at the deadline or something like that. I really think they're going to be big buyers for offense. Great. I mean, they did a nice job in the offseason. I just worry about DeGrom and injuries. If he goes down, they're in trouble. So are you taking the under? I am. Not by much. No, it's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um, they will improve. They will. I think we can both agree that they will not yeah. be 68-94. Yeah. Even if DeGrom gets injured, they're going to do better than that. They're going to have to watch his pitch counts. Sure. Yeah, I don't think he does, you know, 30 starts. Um, but 20 probably means 20 more wins or at least 17, 18 At least more in, wins. In, in those games. Yeah. And that could be the jump they need. I mean, the DeGrom effect is real. But I'm going to openly bet them right now. Let's go, Texas. Both Texas teams. Do you teams. need a loan? No, uh, no, 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 no. I bet so far $70 through our conversations. <laughs> I got it right hey, here. Hey, look at that. Um, Dad, last team, and I'm really curious to hear you talk about this. Oh. Oakland Athletics, they were 60-102 and 102 last year. Their line, right on the money, 60-05. 60.5. I don't know why I said 05. 60.5. What are your thoughts? Under. I think they have no talent. Um, and it's a shame. I know they're waiting for a move and all this other stuff, and it's a political nightmare. They want to get out of Oakland. Last year, there's more people that went to the WBC than all year at Oakland. Think about that for a minute. I know. The WBC was a short series, what, a two-week series? 
got get had more fans than the entire year at Oakland. I mean, it's, they got to move that franchise. And uh, in spring training, they were just god awful. Um, I think they were in, uh, fifty-five wins or less. That, that I think they're gonna just be. No one's gonna see them on the road, and no one's gonna see them in Oakland. <laughs> you know, you talk a lot about attendance, and you don't think the team's that good. The line just to take the over was too good for me. I just put a couple bucks on the on the over. Um, I think they're like sixty-two and a hundred, um, but again, they have like seven top pitching prospects. Some of those guys got to click and be good for a couple years. Um, that guy from Japan, Drew Rosinski, maybe he clicks. Um, yeah, he's had a tough time in the major leagues. Cam Waldachuk has had this great spring training. Um, you know, I think something clicks. Aguilar, Jesus Aguilar used to be just this big bopper. Yeah. Um, maybe Christian Pache finally gets it going. Um, uh, Jace Peterson from Milwaukee had a good year last year. I know they're still going to... I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, guys. I'm just saying they get one or two games over 16 and a half. I'm going to take it. Um, I think that's a team destined for the trade deadline as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I think they'll trade people too. Seth yeah. Brown's gone. But there's enough rookies and people making the league minimum that... I mean, again, they kind of got rid of everybody. Um, yeah. Maybe Ramon Laureana and Seth Brown, but that's kind of it for who gets traded at this deadline. They're not going to be this big Matt Ol- Olson, Chapman, you know. Yeah. Um, there's just not that much left on Oakland. So let's see if the experiment works. I'm not saying they're, oh, my God, 80-win team, but just enough, and we'll see if it bites me in the ass. It's only a couple bucks. H- dead half and half for the uh, – for the AL. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Makes it interesting. And L Dad. Okay. Um, there's some in here that I think is straight up harder. Um, I think the over unders are harder to predict, but I think the playoff prediction of the six that make it's pretty easy. Before I reveal the over under for the NL East, what how do you think DraftKings ranks them for best team who's most projected to win first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Fifth's easy, obviously. I'm thinking they're, they'd go Atlanta, New York, and Philly, but that's not how I have it. They have it, Atlanta, New York, and Philly. Um, which one do you want to start with? Let's uh, go those. Atlanta. They have so 101 uh, team, uh, just like the Mets. They have a 94 and a half line. Hmm. Really good line. I think that's accurate. Yeah, it is. Um, I think that is the highest. No, the Dodgers have the highest line on here. Interesting. Um, and then wow, even with all their subtractions. Dodgers and Astros are tied for the highest level. Okay. Um, so what do you think? Over or under? 94 and a half for the Braves. <sighs> tough, tough way to start. I think under by a scotch, like maybe one or two games. I have over by a game. 95 wins. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Right on the money. I would not yeah. bet money on it. Yeah. Um, can I argue why um, I think they'll be good? I just think that again they don't they don't play Miami and Washington as much as last year, which they beat up on those guys pretty pretty well. Um, I just think Atlanta's a good team. I don't. I think along the way, you know, I really think losing the shortstop is going to yeah. really be a difference. He was a true leader of that team, yeah. and I think they're going to miss him. I do too. Um, he had a good year with them. There's some injuries on their pitching staff. Spencer Strider, however, they'll have a full year of him. Um, They'll have a full year of Michael Harris, too. Uh, and there's just so many all-stars on this team that I know there'll be buyers to, yeah. to fill any needs they have. Um, I mean, so let's think. Playoff team, Sw- obviously. Sw- Sw- Swanson had 27 home runs, 100 RBIs. I mean, he was a key component. Uh, yeah. I don't know why he didn't get an extension by everybody else did. I, I'm right there with you, and I something's, yeah. lambasted them in the offseason. season. It's a tough line. If that, I think, was at 95 and a half, I'd take the under. Like, it really is, yeah. like, right around. It's perfect. Yeah. I was a little mad, Dad, that the Mets won 101 games but had a line of 91 and a half despite adding Justin Verlander. They got crushed with injuries. I, Diaz is going to be a huge loss. So can you – all right, so <laughs> if I add Kodai Senga and I add Justin Verlander and I extend player after player – McNeil, Nemo, Nemo um, I bring in, you know, I, I kind of wash my bullpen, basically. I know Quintana's hurt. I know Diaz is out all year. Yeah. But I, it's just hard for me to wrap my head around 
that they got 10 games worse. It's hard to believe because they added some key, key components. Uh, but I think they probably took in the fact that they lost their closer and they have done nothing to replace him yet. I think, I think David Robertson will be the closer. Yeah, he's 37 years old. Yeah. <laughs> they have, but they did, have an old team, period. Yeah, I agree. Injuries could really be a, a major part of that. So you're taking the under? 91 and a half? I think I'm doing the over by okay. Scotch. Okay, so am I. Yeah. I don't know what a Scotch is, but a couple A little bit. Yeah. Um, a few. It's a Michigan so, thing. So who wins? Who wins the East? Philadelphia. Whoa! Can't, oh my God, that got me. I was excited. All right, so... <laughs> We had, we're we're both. Let's stay with the Mets for fifteen more seconds. We're both in the over. I think both the Mets and Braves. We shouldn't. That line shouldn't be bet. Let's now, Dad, talk about the Phillies. I love the Phillies. Line. You didn't even hear the line. Line was eighty eight and a half. They were eighty seven and seventy five last year. And you're taking obviously the over if they're uh-huh. winning these. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Tell yeah. me why you're so. You should get DraftKings. Tell me why you are so. Trey Turner. Trey Turner. I agree. He will make the difference. I think he is probably in the top three MVP. We'll get to MVP shortly. The thing with stolen bases, he's going to have. I think stolen bases is huge. I'm right there with you. And if Harper comes back earlier than they think, they got one hell of a lineup. So losing Hoskins and losing Harper half the year does not affect your thought? No. Okay. No. Because I think they'll make some switches along the way. They got a little bit of depth. Um you know, again, teams should be making trades quicker than they do. Yeah, no. They should be getting a first baseman. Apparently, a couple guys got cut that might end up with the Phillies uh, pretty quickly. I think they're just waiting for people to make their final cuts. So they'll get a replacement for him. But I just think that I think they're going to be scoring eight, nine runs a game. Well, your confidence has given me enough to place a bet. I still had <laughs> over. Um, I had like a 90 and 72. You have like a 98 team, don't you? Something I, I, like that. I think yeah. they're going to be fun. Does anyone in the East get over 100 games? No. I agree. But I will go ahead and put some money on the fills. Um, Dad, Marlins. This one really interests me. That, so they were 69-93 last year. Cy Young, Sandy Alcantara. Um, their line, however, is 76 and a half. Did they make their team better by seven games? They made, you know, a couple of those trades, I think, are pretty interesting. I think they improved their lineup, and I think the farm system, they're kind of on the farm system, make them better. Seven games, though? Yeah. I mean, Jazz just almost never played center field, so let's put him in center field. Joey Wendell doesn't really play shortstop, so let's put him at shortstop. Gene Segura hasn't played third base in a while, let's put him at third base. Luis Arise is our second baseman. Yeah. Let's get Yuli Gurriel. I, I like that signing. I think they're kind of on your young pitching. They got some young pitchers. Yeah, they do. Sixto Sanchez has had a couple years removed since he's played, and I think he'll be there mid year or something like that. I just think that uh, I don't know if they're seven games better, but they're going to be better than a 69. Okay, so line 76 and a half. Um, I say Scotch, that's a little bit under. All right, I have under two at 75. I think they got six games better, not seven. Okay. This, This stuff matters, people. Yeah. I think it'll be a fun team to watch. Yeah. You know? Dead Nats. They were 55 and 107 last year. They got Chad Cool. Um, <laughs> 59 and a half somehow is the line. They think they got almost five games better. Under. Yeah. I think worst team, <laughs> worst team in baseball. Oakland's the worst team. Okay. They're second as the I think Nats are the worst. Nats okay. are favored to be the worst team in baseball for what it's worth. You know, you worry. I mean, that's such a cool stadium and it's such a, a vibrant part of town. It's a shame that the team is tanking. And, I mean, people down there love the Nationals. I mean, they had a nice little rise there. And then to be completely stripped, yeah. um, you know, it's almost like you, you kind of have to think of a reason to go to the game now. Mm-hmm. You know? Because the young kids are still a couple years away. Cade Cavalli's out all year. Injured. Yeah. Uh, Tanner Rainey, who was, I think, their, like, de facto closer last year. He's out through August. And who knows about Strasburg? He's not going to play this year. I think he's done. Yeah. Um, he's a shoulder, and they, those are just hard to re- rehab. Yeah, I mean, he's got yeah. a ring in a World Series MVP and hundreds of millions of dollars, so yeah, can't be too mad. <laughs> um, okay, so we are all in agreement except the Braves, which honestly could go either way. I'd, I'm not. That's not yeah. worth fighting about. Cardinals, Dad. I know this is going to be hard for you. Cubs fan over here. They were 93 and 69 last year. Crazy year by Pujols. 100% responsible for some of those wins. Yachty, not really responsible for those wins, but clubhouse leader. Their line went, they dropped five games according to DraftKings, 88 and a half. What's your thought? Over. Yeah, I think that's super easy. 
you know, they got a nice little farm system. Right. Uh, but Jordan Walker. Is, yes, and he's starting and going to hope. Well, we're not about play all year, but he'll get the opportunity to play all year. He's going to be you know, in the the mix for rookie of the year. He's that good. Yeah. He's athletic as hell. Lars Newbar had a great great World Baseball Classic with Japan. Um, looks to be like a true truly starting outfielder yeah. at this point. Probably the most athletic team in baseball. I agree. And defensively, best team in baseball still. Yeah. Um, Added a little bit of pop with the catcher. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, they don't really have any injuries uh, to report. I think Wayne is going to miss um, like April, but the, after that, and that's probably good for him. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't going to play all thirty games, right? Um, I think this is an easy over as well. Um, it's it just feel it's if it was a little lower, I'd put a lot more money on it. But if it was like eighty five, I'd be like a hundred percent. Eighty eight and a half, they could end up with eighty eight, but I do think they'll end up in the nineties. Yeah, Dad Brewers. <laughs> dad brewers dad brewers yeah. we're we're talking brew crew i almost wore my hebrew hammer shirt they were 86 and 76 last year weird way to finish the year with josh Hader being traded yeah that didn't help weird a weird clubhouse still weird clubhouse they traded some weird stuff they got i feel like some they won some trades what's going on in milwaukee 85 and a half is the line I think it's going to be just a touch under. And you know why? I think at a trade deadline, they get rid of their pitching. So do I. So do I. I think and they Corbin, rebuild. I think I'm kind of right along there with you. Because uh-huh. he wants out. You know, Corbin did not like the, the process yeah. of the negotiations. He will welcome a trade. I think they will do that and get a whole bunch of prospects and start from scratch. Small market team. You know, they, they see that they can't afford a lot of these guys with big tickets. So I think they're coming to realization that, hey, we can't pay them. Let's trade them and start from scratch. Right there with you. Taking the under. Um, Dad, let's talk about your Cubbies. I think being a loyal. Look, I took the under for the Red Sox. So I'm curious. 74 and 88 last year. Best team uh, had second half. Finished over 500 second half of the season. Good thing we're talking about the line for the whole year this time. <laughs> 77 and a half. I think there are going to be more. I think there will be over that. I think you like the game more or less versus over under. I think you just like saying more, more, <laughs> more. I don't like the word over. Over. Um, okay, tell me. Go ahead. Gloat about the Cubs for 30 seconds. I think they have some youth and some veterans. Um, I think they pocketed like $10 million for trades at the deadline to help them you know, get over that hump. I think they're looking at competitiveness, and I think they won't sell at the deadline. They'll acquire, and I'm thinking they'll make a major push, especially if Milwaukee falters in the first half. It gives them a shot at second place. They won't make the playoffs, but they're going to be close or over 500. I think the Cubs do better. I have them under. I figured we'd have this one different. Um, I think they will sell um, in the second half. Uh, so. Yeah. Let me walk through the logic. You don't have to agree with me. Just hear me out. I know you're not going to agree with me. <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong. Bellinger, Hosmer, Mancini, Tucker Barnhart, Fulmer, and I think Smiley were all one-year contracts or one year with options. Correct. Okay. You're, you're right. If any of them have a good year, I think they're trade candidates. Unless like they're massively over competing with St. Louis for first yeah. place. I also think... Ian Happ just is on the Yankees' radar. And I and Toronto. Gold yeah. glove left fielder that can hit. Yeah. Switch hitter. And I, again, I, I just, same reason I almost think that the Orioles, like, I don't think it's this year for Chicago. You know, you could look at, win- I like to look at windows if I'm a team. Paul Goldschmidt's in his contract year. Will he get an extension? Maybe. But could he hit the open market and now an MVP leave St. Louis and Cubs go, now's our moment. You, you have to look at St. Louis and go, uh-uh, right now. You just, you, you can't, I mean, it's the Yankees looking at the Astros going, we're not better than this team yet. The Cubs also don't have an alley for wild card. They're not better than the Phillies, Braves, Mets, right. Padres, Dodgers, whoever you want to call the wild card winner. So it's like, if we stand pat at the deadline, we miss an opportunity and lose probably all these names. Um. So I'll be very, and I'll be very surprised if all these six click. By the way, I don't think all of Bellinger, Hosmer, and Mancini will click. I don't. Th- I think one of them is like gone by May thirtieth. Um, 
I think we would vote Hosmer. Right. Exactly, because yeah. he's free. And they got basically. a kid in the minors that's right. pretty good. So, Cubs will be, we'll see. I'll be excited to see him come June. Big reason I wanted to see him in June, because I think they'll be still good and competitive at that time. Um, and the games will matter. Uh, I have them in the kind of in the same season as last year, kind of around the same mark as 2022. Okay. 2022. Okay. Can I talk about the Pirates? Sure. All right. Openly, I so I there's three teams that I took. The Rockies, Rays, under. Didn't even need to see the line. I don't even know. I might have to look up the Rockies line. I didn't even write it down. I hate that team. <laughs> uh, and the Pirates I took over. I didn't even look at the, the line yet. Turns out that I was very happy with that. The line is only 68 and a half. That team has gotten so much better. Now, again, I think they'll still trade some people, but they're not going to trade Cruz. Hayes, I think McCutcheon f- finished out his career in yeah. Pittsburgh. Um, a lot of the bullpen's really young. Um, Jack Sawinski's still young. I don't think they're going to find a partner for Brian Reynolds still. So I think there's a lot of players that still are on this team. Um, I don't want to say a core of guys, but a good amount of guys that are the stars or the players that will get this team and beat up on the Reds, <laughs> maybe beat up on the Cubs and Brewers that sell the deadline. Um, and I, th- I think they're going to win like 70, 71 games. What are your thoughts on the Pirates? What was the... Uh, what 68 they... and a half. I say over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that infield is a very good infield. Yeah. And I think... Choi. You know, G-Man Choi is fun. Yeah. I mean, you got a 6'5 shortstop that has a, yeah. an, you know, just a, a strong, strong arm that he's going to save him some runs and everything. I think the future is bright. Yeah. I just hope they can retain some of these guys over the years. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to be a fun team to watch. Great, great ballpark. Reds that super surprised at this line. So they had the same, like, I'm going to double check. So they were 62 and a hundred yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, same as the pirates. However, DraftKings said they got better because their line 65 and a half uh, under right. One of the easiest ones to take. Yeah. Um, 60 and 102, maybe even 59 and 103, something like that. Yeah. Um, they did not get better. Um, Votto won't be playing 162, probably like 120, 130. Jonathan India may just have had that rookie year, and that's it. Hunter Green's great, but he's one pitcher that p- plays every five games. Correct. And then everyone else is kind of like an unproven rookie. Ken Griffey Jr. is like the third highest paid player on this team. I don't know if you saw that. He no. is. So just like Chris Davis is with his contract with the Orioles, really? it goes... Um, wow. Wow. That's Va- fun. Yeah, it goes Votto, Myers, Griffey. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's just it's not a team that I think is going to do well. And it's not backed by a city's – or sorry, a GM slash owner's like, backing. The, um, the thing about Cincinnati is the other teams love going to Cincinnati because it's a short porch yeah. and they score a ton of runs in Cincinnati. Their pitching staff is weak, so it's a lot of going to be 11 run games there yeah. and everything else. Hunter Green's fun to watch. Yeah. If yeah. it's He's the only draw. Vado's probably swan song. He'll be the all-star nominee regardless if he's good or not. Um, but Green, Green should be an all-star for Cincinnati at some point in the future. He's yeah. quite a good pitcher. Yeah. Dad, I, I think the biggest debate in the NL is who wins the West. Dodgers or the Padres? Padres. I think so, too. But let's talk about the Dodgers right now, because I'm really... I agree with you. Okay. Um, so the Dodgers won the most games in baseball last year. Yes. 111 and 51. Yeah. They Record-wise, they were the best team in baseball for, for the regular season. The line, it dropped them 16 games to 95 and a half. Mm. Now, let's... I re- like I said, I really want to deep dive. So the Dodgers lost Trey Turner, Justin Turner, and then Gavin Lux to injury. Trevor Bauer, eh, question mark slash money. I think that's more of the issue. Walker Bueller's still out through the whole year. Yeah. Um, uh, Tony Gonsolin's out through May, who was a great pitcher for him. Um, they also... Give me someone else they lost. Why can't I think of a name right now? Um... Oh, well, kind of Cody Bellinger. Um, So they lost some MVPs. They lost some MVP candidates. And they also did this weird thing in the offseason where they're they're trying to maintain under certain luxury tax. I heard what you said about Shohei. I know that's a possibility. Um, You're saving money for the future. 
it it is seeming that way. J.D. Martinez has a horrible spring. Didn't see if you saw this. They went and got his former hitting coach because he's hitting so badly. They hired his former hitting coach to help him refine mm-hmm. his swing. Huh. It's the first. He, he might be a release a candidate it's, before Thursday. <laughs> I doubt that, um, especially if he just went out and got his yeah, coach. Um, they still have Betts and Freddie Freeman, who are MVP players, and Will Smith, Kershaw, Urias, etc. Yeah, they have. They have still have stars. They still have stars. They are banking on a few rookies, Miguel Vargas. You know, um, coming in. There's a couple other people like in their pitching and their bullpen that could break. You know, break out. It's the first year I've ever questioned the Dodgers, I feel. Yeah. They've been like a playoff team for a decade yeah. straight. Everything you read in the, the different publications, they had to do that because they weren't going to pay the, the third year of luxury tax and lose draft choices yeah. and really be put you know behind the eight ball. They said, okay, now we're going to cut and we're going to get back to an even keel. And then, as we do that, then invest wisely for next year. So basically this year they're going to take a breath. Next year they're going to go full force. That's what I'm thinking. So I tell you, over and under, 95 and a half. What do you have? 95 is what they're predicting? 95 and a half. I say yes, just a little under. I have them winning, winning 95 games too. Yeah. yeah. Tough to do the under. Yeah. Um, I think they've hit the over for, like like I said, like a decade. Yeah. So the Padres, that on the other foot, you're probably going to go with the over, and you don't even know the line, but I'm just going to write it down. 93 and a half is the line there. Over. Okay. <laughs> um, does this team hit 100 games? Wins? No, 98. Okay. So a really good team. Yep. Um, Fun team. They they were eighty nine seventy three last year. They definitely got better. I mean, they got yeah. considerably better. Um, you know, this team money won. is no object. That is also a very important point. Just like New York. Yeah, they were eighty nine seventy three without Tatis. Now I know you could say steroids, and I know he's looking at a boot, and he deserves it. But he'll be a major player for about one hundred and thirty games of the season. Hopefully, if he doesn't get hurt, then you go sign Xander Bogarts. Are you kidding me? You have five shortstops on this team. You're going to have a full year of Juan Soto. Um, you'll ha- you have Michael Waka as like like a throw-in piece. Yeah, he they, was the best pitcher in Boston last year. Yeah, they, they added a lot late in the year. Yeah. February, they added a lot of players. They're hoping Cruz or Carpenter can kind of switch, you know, or like yeah. click in a platoon role. Um, I, it's so impressive to see this team. I think they have just... The right mojo. They got to the NLCS last year. They tasted the competition. I have them in the World Series. I have them in the World Series, too. That's fun. We're, we're leaking picks. We're over an hour already, guys. Thanks for staying with us. I know it was going to be a long podcast. Not for the faint of heart. So we're both over there. Giants, Dad. Very similar to the White Sox. A mid-team last year, 81 and 81. They're projected to be right there again. 81 and a half wins. Under. I have under as well. Tell yeah. me why. I think they lost all focus of what they were trying to do. I think they went downhill. Correa took a huge step away from them. They didn't get um, Judge. Everything they went for in the offseason didn't turn out well. I think they don't have any momentum. Belt's gone. I think they lost a lot of energy in that clubhouse. Yeah, and I don't know. I got them in fourth place. Whoa, that could happen. Yeah. Backs, yeah. yeah. Um, it just seems to me like a team of average players. Last year for Brandon Crawford, and I don't, I don't know if they've even talked to. I mean, they were supposed to get Correa for the shortstop, but now who do they get? It's... Tim Anderson. Um, Joey Bart didn't click. Um, uh, Yaz and Wade did not have a, a a good secondary year for that crazy twenty twenty one. Michael Conforto hasn't played baseball in like 15, 16 months. Yeah. Um, Mitch Hanniger is always injured. Um, a lot of their like pitching is like maybe it'll click, maybe it won't. Um, Jack Peterson will probably go down. Well, he's listed as their DH, right? So I just don't. Do, I don't think they have anything to be excited about, right? I, I don't know. I th- I think they did lose. I think they're big sellers at the deadline. That could happen. That would make them yeah. under. Yeah. Um, Diamondbacks. That's you're gonna have the over here. Um, yeah. seventy five and a half wins. For the Brownbacks. Yeah. Let's I think they're over. probably the most improved team in baseball. Wow. I definitely think the Rangers, but no, I uh, think they're a good team. What makes them so improved? Uh, speed, defense, youth, and I think they got incrementally better as the season went on. Those young players are going to take the next step. The outfield is one of the best outfields in baseball. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's got to click because they got to play with each other still. Yeah. Um, Longoria is going to be a great captain there. I think they should trade for pitching. 
built around Zach Gallon, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, the a rookie right fielder with Corbin Carroll, a rookie catcher in Moreno. Lots got to click. Lots got to go right. Um, uh, Mark Melanson's out through June. Um, so I guess like Joe Mantiply or, or Andrew Chafin could be like closer for a little bit. Chafin can do that job. Right. So can Mantiply. Yeah. I um, think it's just a fun team, and I think uh, the, hopefully the fans will come out and support them. I think it would be a fun team to watch, to be quite honest. Oh, I agree. I think they have like an Orioles energy yes. this year. Yes. Um, I have them kind of right around 80, 81, 82 wins, um, but definitely on the over. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. Um, I'm going to put some D-backs money down, Dad. Because I greenbacks and a D-backs. Yo, that's fun. I like that a lot, actually. I wonder if that's a podcast. No, like talking D-backs, talking greenbacks, and you yeah. get paid for every yeah. appearance. That's fun. That, yeah, I think so. Um, Dad, the last team you already know. I save them. Save the worst for last. Um, Colorado Rockies. I just took the under, but I just had to look up the line. It's really a shame what they've done to that franchise because it's you know a fun city. It's a growing city, um, athletic. The stadium's fun, easy to get to. They're just they let it go. It is a shame. Yeah, yeah. They it's whatever they predict is under <laughs> sixty five and a half. I took the under. Yeah. Um, what the hell they might lose a hundred games. I think so. Um, they can. Uh, why Chris Bryant signed there, I'll never know. Uh, me either. Uh, well, we had a lot in common. We only had two different this entire um, NL. Our AL is our big thing, but mm-hmm. only two. Braves and Cubs, which is close. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on in Colorado, and I really don't care. <laughs> Hope they trade people so they can play on competitive teams. Okay. Dad, the recap. Our differences. We have ten differences. Orioles, Guardians, Twins. White Sox, Royals, Rangers, Angels, A's, Braves, Cubs. Those will be the 10 teams, about a third, obviously, um, to watch specifically to see who gets hot, um, who makes the trade deadline. A lot of these teams, I mean, Rangers and Angels, we have flipped, obviously, so mm-hmm. one of us is going to be right. Um, the A's, I don't think will be fun to watch, but yeah. Um, you think the Royals are going to be above 70 wins? I think that's interesting. Yeah, you are hometown loving, supporting both Chicago teams. Um, twins are going to be like the Braves for us, kind of like one game, one way or the other. Um, I think you know they had so many things go negatively in their clubhouse last year with the White Sox. You hope that turns around, but Larusa was a huge detriment to that team. Yeah, you know, I mean, he was. He, he just the things he did. I mean, I don't know. He wonder if he was paying attention to the dugout or not. Yes. <laughs> Dad, let's talk playoffs. 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 I want you to run me through. Let's go. Let's stick with the NL. We've been talking about the NL. Okay. Who wins the East, Central, West? You said Phillies were one. Phillies win the East. Okay. Cardinals, Central. Padres, West. I think the Braves win the East, but I have Braves and Phillies in the playoffs. Do you have the Braves in the playoffs? Yes. Um, you have the Mets in the playoffs? Yes. Dodgers? Yes. Okay. So we have the same six teams, just in different orders. That adds up. Who is your NLCS? Uh, it is going to be the Padres and the Cardinals. Ooh, Padres over Cardinals. Okay. Yep. I have Padres over Braves, and I just put a little money on that. Um, I think that could be really fun. Cardinals getting there would be great. It's like the the Ozzie Smith game, basically. Padres and... Cute. Yeah. Right, that, Very that cute. Could, that could be cool. Backflip. Yeah. Backflip game. That'd be fun. He can come out for it. Which one are you going to pick, Ozzy? We got a green back. We got a backflip. All right, get out of here. <laughs> Dead AL. I, I, I had it with these. Um, we're getting loopy. Uh, <laughs> you good? Um, Dead the AL. Yes. Who wins the East? Uh, it is Toronto. I agree. Central. Cleveland. I agree. West. Houston. Obviously. Wildcard winners. Uh, Seattle. Angels. Yankees. I have the Rangers. So we talked about that. Mm-hmm. Who is your ALCS? Houston, Cleveland, Houston wins. Wow, the Guardians. Good for the Guardians. I had the Blue Jays. Astros over Blue Jays. Cleveland has pitching a defense, which is yes. kind of key in the playoffs. You're absolutely right. So, all right. So I had, let me keep track of all this stuff. We're having so much fun. Um, if the Braves beat the, uh, sorry, if the Padres beat the Braves, $5 gets you 100 bucks. So, love that bet. Um, 
we have Astros over Padres. Padres will add at the deadline, too. I agree. Um, so we both... Do you have Padres winning the World Series? Or do you have Astros? I have the Astros winning the World Series. Astros over Padres. Yeah. We have the same World Series. Yeah, right there. That's fantastic. Right there. They're Como Sabi. They're just... Yeah. Um, a 10... To, for fun, since we're talking about DraftKings, a $10 bet nets you 360 if you can call the exact winning World Series. Hmm. So... I'll take that any day of the week. Oh, yeah? So if Houston beats the Padres, $360 goes to my bank account. Talk about fun celebration. Not 70 You want my 10 You want to do the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> on, like, the, on the air, people. You're like, yeah, I like that bet a lot. And if anybody wants to call us to get us as a consultant, we can be... Uh, betting <laughs> betting advice. We love it. All right, let me... You you were like, that. <laughs> you you place that bet fast. You're yeah. like, yeah, that's... That's a hell of a bet. That's a simple bet. Yeah. All right, let me get the futures. I'm on a roll, too, by the way. World Series, straight forecast. Another. Astros beat the Padres. $10. All right, Dad, I placed a bet for you, too. Be $720 on a $20 mutual bet. That's, Love it. That's a party. Yeah. That's that's a crab feast here in Maryland. That's uh, Ruth Chris. That's, that's Two that's, times. That's several Ruth Chris's, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Dad, let's talk awards. Okay. Now, um, let's talk Rookie of the Year first. Sure. All right, AL Rookie of the Year. Gunnar Henderson. I, he is the favorite right now. I want to sh- uh, show you all those ads, or the certain uh, ads, lines. Um, I agree. I think, he, and I'm not picking him, but I agree that he is the favorite, and I think that's a good pick. I am picking Masataka Yoshida for the Boston Red Sox. Hmm. If you okay. watched in the World Baseball Classic, he's adjusted to Major League Pitching, uh, that competition. He's adjusted to Major League Stadiums. Gunnar Henderson had a small call-up last year, very small sample size. I think a lot of people have the Orioles' number this year. They are scouting them. Um, so uh, great pick with, with Gunnar. I think it'll be one of them. Um, it's, a, it's a deep drop-off, in my opinion, for, the, for third place there. Okay. And L Dad, Rookie of the Year. Cor- Corbin Corbin Carroll. I have Corbin as well. Yep. Speed. Yeah. Hitting. Gonna play all year. Yeah, but they got they have like four guys that are pretty close in, you know, rookie of the year, but I think he's gonna be head and shoulders. Speed, defense, yeah. hitting. He'll probably bat lead off. So yeah, he's he'll be the uh the straw. Yeah. Um, let's do MVP. Sure. Um who is the AL MVP? It's AL Jordan first. Alvarez. I think that's a great bet. Um, I took Mike Trout because if it's not one of the Angels, Mike Trout's, what, three or four MVPs at this point. Um, Dad, who do you have for the NL? MVP? MVP. Trey Turner. I do too, and I'm putting $20 on him to win right now. Um, Yeah. (laughs) If he wins MVP, 190 Okay. You want to do it? Yeah. All right. I'm doing another 20 Yep. Um, (laughs) You're like, I'm full in on this. Um, the casinos will be calling us tomorrow. You want to come over? We'll, we'll give you so, a we'll give you a pass. So let <laughs> I want to talk. Um, I know you're like you're poor. Um, Trey Turner wins MVP. Here's my argument: bigger bases, more steals. Speed will fa- matter this year. Defense will matter as well because of the shift. You're going to see better defensive yeah. plays. So his defensive metrics, playing a key position at shortstop. Um, will matter he hits for average he hits for power he'll score runs being at the leadoff hitter of the phillies with that massive machine behind him um if he does win mvp he's top three um with you and that's a really safe bet yeah especially with that those that what odds. a great pickup for the phillies it really filled so many needs they had um and you know what i think he's happy he's had a really good spring a lot of people think he's 30 30 40 40 Never, probably not 40, 40 but you never know. Yeah. Um, in Philadelphia, I think 30 30 is 30 30 is realistic. 30 yeah. 30 is very realistic. Yeah. Um, let me scroll down. Dad, do you remember? We're going to talk Cy Young now, Dad. Sure. Do you remember the two names that I took um, uh, that were like te- my most underrated um, uh, pitchers? Zach Allen was one. That was yours. Zach Allen was yours. Yep. Um, but mine was Julio Urias and Christian Javier. Okay. And I have both of them winning. A co. The Cy Young. A co. Both winning Cy Young. Okay. Um, who do you have? Zach Gallon. You have Zach Gallon? I do. 
Let me see what his most line improved is. In, uh, team in baseball. You're, I love that you're. It's, it's a very realistic possibility. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let me look at. Where's ML? They. The favorite is Jacob Degrom, which I don't think will happen. Um. I also think that these young pitchers, Javier and Urias, but he's in the American League. I know. I was looking at AL first. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. So I was just sorry. looking at favorite. AL favorite was okay. Degrom. I was looking at um, sorry Christian Javier. But I think a younger pitcher wins MVP this year to adjust the pitching clock. I don't think these older guys or these heavier guys yeah. um, adjust as quickly. Yeah. Um, I don't think Sandy can repeat in the NL. Um, Julio Urias had worse odds. Um, Zach Gallon is seventh in rankings of Cy Young. A ten dollar bet would net you one twenty if he wins it. Um, you weren't so keen on handing that money. <laughs> um, so you didn't feel that as strongly, which is okay. Yeah. Um, both of our picks, especially Urias for me, which is weird because he always like wins games and has low ERA, yeah. um, are more of like the dark horses. They're not obviously the the, the chalk picks. Um, Trout, uh, Turner, Yoshida, and Carroll were kind of were kind of in there for um, uh, chalk picks. Dad, do you have any dark horses in any of those three categories? Uh, I do. In the <laughs> Rookie of the Year, I had a lot of things. I got Jordan Walker as probably second uh, from St. Yeah. Louis. I don't think it's a dark horse. I think he's actually favored. Uh, okay. He's favored over Carroll. Okay. Um, you know what? In a really cr- crazy thing, I read that JT Realmato, uh NL uh, MVP, is a, a candidate for a lot of folks. And then Jose Ramirez uh, in AL, apparently he is a... Uh, a dark horse. I like Kyle Tucker too, by the way. JT Romuto for MVP is plus ten thousand. So a five dollar bet nets you five hundred dollars. Um so <laughs> it's one of those things when you put your head tonight, like on the pillow and you're like, Why didn't I bet five dollars? Like You got change? Well not yet, but I can do it if you want me to. You want me to put five dollars on I got five dollars. <laughs> I'm very actually happy you don't have DraftKings now because I yeah, think I, know. I think I, all of my I, inheritance would go away. I, I have addictive personality. You do. I'll put five dollars for a real motor for you. Yeah. Um, just look at that five hundred dollars. Why wouldn't you? I mean, that's I so know. tough. I, um, that is that would be a long shot. Um, Dad, hilariously, I have a Philly long shot for MVP as well, and his name Schwarber. Correct, Kyle yeah. Schwarber. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna put a little five bucks on him. Not much. Does not get me five hundred dollars if you know not, not JT Real Muto money. Um, other dark horses, um, rookie of the year, Jared Schuster, probably name you haven't heard of yet. Uh, Ian Anderson, uh, did not break camp with him and Kyle Wright is hurt. Jared Schuster, again, the Braves just manufacture pitching. Yeah. A lot of people think he could be like a Spencer Strider who finished second in rookie of the year category next or last year. Schuster is so way down the list that right now a $5 bets, a $300 payout. So I'm just saying, I'm not taking it because I don't think he's going to play the whole year. Uh, but if it clicks um, in Atlanta like it did for Spencer Strider last year, you have a yeah. you know like a Smoltz Glavin Maddox <clears throat> situation for me. MVP options, I really think like a um, Corey Seager or Marcus Simeon, um, one of those guys with a good enough Texas year could be winning it. I feel like they almost like cancel each other out though. I don't know. And then Hunter Brown, Rookie of the Year pitcher um, for the Astros making a huge difference, um, I think is yeah. is realistic. Is Hayden Wojnicki, uh any anywhere in that thing? Cubs. Is he a rookie pitcher. of the year? Yeah. Hayden, how do you suppose his name? No. Wineski. No. He's, the, he's not even listed, okay. so I can't even take a bet on him. Okay. So it's crazy odds, is what yeah. you're saying. There's one Cub. Um, where'd he go? Matt Mervis is on here. Yeah, he's not going to He won't have enough of bats. I, I Listen, yeah. the odds are crazy on him right yeah. now. Um, let me look at putting just a wee bit, just a wee bit of money on Hunter Brown. Um, and I have $5 left, Dad. <laughs> so we dropped $200. Well, I dropped like 180 or whatever this math is. Um, five bucks left. What is something crazy to, to um, put on, think about? Um, how about Anthony Volpe, uh, rookie of the year, Yankee God, shortstop? It's so hard for me to bet on bet on them. Yeah, but apparently he is going to be in I the know. mix for the Yankees. I know, I know. I saw him at Bowie last year. That's why I say that. I know. Apparently, he has speed and hitting. 
He's, he'll st- sk- steal 30 bases. If he plays the whole year, you know, that's well, tough. Right now, that's their guy right now. I wish they could take, like, games, not just World Series, straight forecasts, but just, like, uh, like it's in six games, the Astros beat the Padres or something like that. You know, the other thing, too, I read that Acuna is, like, the favorite for the NL MVP. Yeah, I can see that. All right, let's look at crazy little props. Stolen base leader in all of baseball. I think Trey Turner. Trey Turner would be a big... Acuna is favorite right now. For stolen bases. And then Estuary Ruiz is second. Forgot about him. Wins leader. Wow. Actually, I already took money on Julio Ruiz. I forgot about this. Um... <laughs> God, sound off in the comments. Um, <laughs> what I should do this five dollars on? I feel like I want to do everything on the thing. Um, do they have manager of the year? No, they don't. Oh, okay. That's a good. That'd be a good one. DraftKings, you should do that. Yeah. Um, I got a dark horse for uh, manager of the year. Who's your manager of the year? Bruce Bochy. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, tur- I mean, he, I don't know about turn the team around, but obviously, if he gets the World Series, he would deserve Correct. it. Um. Well, I'm going to take a little playoff parlay. Um, if basically you can step, just like parlays, you can stack people. Um, and there was an option I saw earlier that it is, let me look at it. If the Yankees, Guardians, Astros, Mets, Cardinals, and Dodgers all make the playoffs, $5, well, it doesn't net me a whole bunch, but I'm okay with that. That nets me 30 bucks. I'm going to take that because I think all those teams are pretty easily in the playoffs. I am officially out of money i'm out of digital money i'm out of money you missed the opportunity i got five bucks i'll give you i'll take the bet again um all right fine (laughs) i'm out of money um let me get five dollars back in the account dad while i do this and obviously people at home have tuned us out and they're like what are these morons (laughs) still doing stop wasting your money you're gonna be so wrong you got seven right for the free agency um net me 50 bucks Exactly. He the bets do pay off for him. Yeah, you have you're still ahead. Oh yeah. Um enjoy baseball. Go back to the parks. Enjoy the new cover, rules. We didn't cover Cy Young American League. I t- I told you I took Christian Javier. Who'd you take? I took Fra- Framber Val- oh, awesome. Valdez. Awesome. So we're yeah. thinking Houston Astros. Yep. Um Well that's awesome. I think uh, Framber's like second or third in um like votes or odds. Um Dad, we we ended in a crazy betting thing. Let's let's round it out. Let's make it all um, good. I'm bring pretty, it home. Bring it on home. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And almost yes. an hour and a half of baseball talks. We wanted to be completely exhaustive as we enter the season, so you can make the right bets. You can follow the right players. Maybe this is good fantasy advice for those that do fantasy baseball. Yeah. Um, sound off in the comments if you think we missed something entirely. If um, you don't think like one of these chalk teams is going to make the playoffs, please chat with us. Um, follow us. Subscribe to us. Chat with us on Twitter or at Pastime Podcast underscore on Twitter and on Instagram. And we are the Father and Son Pastime Podcast on Facebook. Anything you want to say, Dad? Have a great rest of the week. And maybe another podcast, talk about the new rules in baseball, good or bad. Maybe we would do a podcast on, on that and futuristic stuff. I would be interested in that as well after a couple of weeks of play to see if it's a sure. good thing for baseball yes. or a bad thing. See for if baseball. the clock gets people upset or you adjust to it and you're home earlier. Yeah. You know? Speaking of clocks, let's close it out there. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching. This is fun. I had a ball doing this, yes. a lot of prep, um, and I'm going to get this uploaded before the season starts. All the DraftKings numbers were as of March 27th. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.